Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tesla Model S Plaid. This has seen some updates since the last Model S and it's actually quite nice. This is probably my favorite design when it comes to the Tesla range. And by the way, it's raining today. So please, for our hustle, being out here while it's raining and still filming this, please like this video, share it and subscribe as well because otherwise I'm not coming out in the rain again to do any more videos. <laughs> it's winter. Anyway, let's get back to the car. Let's talk about the design because it looks fantastic. Like I was saying, you got this uh, updated front light as well. The front splitter looks really good. Nice and low to the ground. This is the plaid version. They also have a standard version as well. And which, whichever one you go for, regardless, they're all all wheel drive. The only difference is with the plaid, you have three motors. I think two at the back, one at the front, and the batteries are load, uh, loaded right below to, for lower center gravity, which again, helps with the speed. This thing can do zero to 61 or 62 or 60 in around two seconds, it's ridiculous. And I don't think anyone needs that level of speed. If you go for the standard one, you will look, you're will looking at getting around 405 miles on the WLTP, and this will give you around 390 miles on the WLTP, depending on which weather condition, and that's just what they've claimed for it to do. So it might not do that in the real life, but Teslas are usually good with actually achieving that level of range when it comes to electricity, electric uh, range. But also, you get that fantastic supercharged network, so you can charge this up very quickly. You're looking at 250 kilowatts uh, fast speed, fast charge on this, so you can get to 10 to 80% in no time at all, 15 minutes or something like that, don't quote me, but plug it in and you're good to go. Back to the design, so on this one we have this uh, spec alloys on this, I can't remember the name on top of my head, it's like a weird name, but we'll leave that on the screen so you guys can see that. You got the red brake calipers, which looks fantastic. I think this is spec on the 21-inch alloys as well. It doesn't help really with the road noise, but it's still pretty cool. And then we move on to the side of the car. We look at some subtle changes and updates as well. Oh, look at that. I was going to mention that, but it's done that already. So you get the pop-out door handles. Uh, they've removed all that chrome finishing all, right, all around the car to give us this black finishing, which I think looks much better, especially with this blue color. It kind of just um, complements it really nicely. And then we move here, kind of like, goes out a little bit with that big wheel arches on the back, gives it a nice bold stance, which is pretty cool. Then it just slopes back. So this is like a sedan sort of like hatchback style kind of thing. And it's just nice and sporty. And then on the back, we move here, we get new tail lights as well, which looks fantastic. And then because this is the plaid version, you get this little badge here as well. I believe it's only on the plaid version, but yeah, you do get this little badge here, which looks odd. I'm not a massive fan of that. And then we get the boot spoiler as well. Nice carbon finishing on there as well. I mean, it's nice and sporty again. And then the diffuser on the back looks really cool as well and sporty. Look at that. I just love the way this is there. And because it's lower to the ground as well, it gives it that chunky look. I kind of like, like that. In the boot, if I just open this up, you get plenty of space. I think more than 700 liters of boot space in here. And then obviously, if you've seen a Tesla before, you can even open underneath here and put more stuff in there, like your charging cable, if you want to do that. You can lift up the pass for shelves. Uh, there's buttons all over here to open things up very quickly. You can fold this all the way down as well. And it's finished in this nice, sort of soft clo cloth material. I wouldn't say it's Alcantara. I'm not entirely sure what material it is, but it's nice and soft and it's all around the boot and everywhere as well. And you get the electronically controlled uh, boot lid there. So just open it up, close it up, nice and good to go. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the design of the car. I think it looks fantastic. I think this is about 5,000 millimeters or just over in length. So it's kind of long, it's a long car. And one thing to notice as well in the UK, you can't actually spec this up anymore. All you can do is buy this with the already available cars in the inventory. So if you're gonna buy one of these, you will be able to spec it up and do all that kind of stuff yourself in the UK. And also, this is not only gonna be available in left-hand drive only. So that might put a span on the works to some people because it takes getting used to driving a left-hand drive here in the UK. But you do get a lot of safety equipment in there that allows you to drive safely whilst you're driving on the wrong side of the car on the right side of the road. And of course you get cameras all around the car for things like your reverse camera, for safety, all that jazz. Again, stuff that we're used to seeing in Teslas nowadays, so I won't get too much into that. What I do have to show you as well is we do have a nice frunk size as well. So if I just get my phone out, Tesla's app is one of the best ones I've seen when it comes to controlling your car, whether it's pre-eating, uh, opening things remotely and stuff like that. Actually, when I used to have my Model 3, I used to get delivery men to deliver stuff in my car for me while I'm away. So I never miss a delivery when I had a Tesla. But yeah, we can open this up and we get a bit of space in here as well, which again, I usually just put charging cables in there so that I can make use, full use of my um, 
boot space that I've got in the back. So yeah, you can do that. You can pop it open using your phone. Unfortunately, you can't use it and then close it back up uh, like you would the boot, but there we go. That's pretty much it for the design. I think it looks fantastic. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Right in the back here, for a car that you've spent 110,000 pounds around about on, you'd expect to be more luxury in here, but it does look nice. I like this white finishing, which might get dirty very quickly, but it's also very easy to clean. The near room is not the best here, as you can see. I'm about five foot 11, but you do get plenty of space for your feet to tuck it in underneath there. There's no uh, transmission tunnel there, obviously, so you can put your feet everywhere. People can see it in the middle. Headroom is all right as well. You do get this glass panoramic sunroof that creates a sense of bigger space in here. One thing I hate about this panoramic sunroof is you can't dim it. So sometimes when I'm sat at the front when it's really sunny, I just feel that burn throughout my whole drive and I wish I could just maybe put some sort of something to prevent that, but I digress. The space in here is okay. It could be better, like I said, but I love the material that's used, all this soft material all around here. Uh, it's really cool. Even some nice finishing here above the speakers. Unfortunately here, I mean, if you sat here, there's nowhere to rest your elbows unfortunately there's no cup holders on the center but you do get some in the door so you can put your bottles there but i do like this screen here though i think we should come closer and actually show you this display because it's actually cool but before we do that we do have two usb-c ports here so if you sat at the back or passengers are sat here they'll be able to charge their devices very quickly because i think this is one of the fastest ones in cars as well which is pretty cool so on the display at the back you can control things like your climate um, and you can also operate some media controls as well so for example here we can adjust the, uh, the ventilation. You can even move the direction up and down like we've seen before. You can power it off completely. You can change your temperature here as well if you want to. Uh, one thing you can also do is change the seat uh, heat in here. So if you want to put your heated seat on, on the back for the back passenger, you can do that yourself. This front seat, you can also move it forwards and backwards as well. So if it's in the way, you can just move that the way and get more leg room in the back. So if this is like a limousine service, for example, they can do that themselves, so that way they can be as comfortable as, as comfortable as they can be at the back. Then you get your media control, so LBC at the moment, you can skip it, change, whatever. And then you can go further and watch things like Netflix, YouTube, some tutorials, if you really want to learn about the Tesla while you're driving, or whilst being a passenger, you can do so. But one thing that's really cool about this is it's very responsive, um, there's no issues there at all. And also it's very sharp and bright and just looks really nice and crisp. Up in the front, we have a lot of technology here. There's barely any buttons or anything to toggle here, which we'll talk more about in a second. Uh, but generally, it's, it feels premium to a certain extent, but I'm not a massive fan, the biggest fan of all the carbon all around the car here. It's just everywhere. It makes it feel a bit tacky, but that's a matter of preference. If you prefer the carbon finishing on there, because this is meant to be a sporty car, so that's probably why they've included it, which is, completely okay. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. That aside, compared to the Model 3 and the Model Y, I do love that we get an instrument cluster, which helps me keep my eyes on the road and see things like, you know, where I'm going, the speed, the range I've got left, all that kind of stuff. It's there. What's missing here is we have no stalks, which can be confusing at first. You have to get used to that on the new steering wheel. You can also opt for the yoke style steering, which costs a bit more. Uh, but with that, again, getting used to that is a, diff it's a different uh, conversation to be had. With no stalks available, things like your um, indicator controls are on here. So you have to kind of tap it up, uh, up is to go right, down is to go left, which I didn't really like as well. It takes me a long time to get used to it because I have to keep, I keep doing this and then realizing, whoops, it's not actually there. Uh, it'd be nice to have the left one on the left side and the right on the right side. So when I'm driving like this, it'd be nice to just tap that side, tap that side as well for whichever way I'm actually going. In the center console, we have two charging ports. So, well, charging mats, so you can place your smartphones there while you're driving. Uh, you have plenty of space here. So for, for example, we have some little bits there where I'm charging my GoPro at the minute. Uh, there's also this bit which you can use to hide things away if you don't want to let people see. Plenty more carbon there for you, if you like it. And some chrome bits and bubs. Underneath here, you can even go underneath there as well. And there's a massive cubby hole there where you can store things if you need to. And then here we have two cup holders. And then underneath this is more space to store things. And then we have this big 17 inch display. And uh, first thing first, we can also tilt or change the angle uh, on this display. So if we go to display here, we can have it facing the driver completely. So takes a couple of seconds. So that's now driver focused. Uh, or if you have everyone, you just want everyone to see it, uh, you can just make it flat again. So it sits right in the middle. And I think it sits flush as well against here, which is good. And then if you want it facing the passenger next to me, you can do that as well. That just means now they can control things like mapping and music and all that stuff without distracting me as the driver while I'm driving, which is good. 
As before, everything is controlled and changed on here with some subtle changes that you can do with the steering little scroll uh, on the steering. But for example, if you go here, then you can use the steering control to go up and down and move the steering and stuff like that. And same for the mirror. So there's no quick way to do things uh, of doing things. You have to come here and go into where things are. So even glove box, you have to use that to open up the glove box. Uh, so there you have it on there. Then we go to pedal and steering. Uh, we can change different mode here. So you have chill, sports and plaid. So plaid is that sports mode, that zero to 60 uh, in two point or one seconds or two seconds or whatever. And then you have your drag strip mode. So if you're going to be going to on a track, for example, you can do that and do launch control, for example, so you can get that maximum speed. It just optimizes the battery and lowers the vehicle a little bit. So it has that cheetah mode ready to go uh, when you're trying to speed off. And then you have steering mode from comfort, standard and sports. I have it on standard because that's nicely weighted and balanced for me. Comfort just softens it up a bit and sport just makes it a bit more precise than you'd have it. You've got track mode there as well, which you can then do some customization uh, if you wish to do so. One thing that's pretty cool is this auto shift uh, park thing, which basically means it will know the position uh, where you park. So if you're facing uh, forwards, for example, when you park, it will know that you're gonna need reverse when you need to get out of the space. So you automatically start the car with the direction that you need to go to. But I don't really trust it because it's beta and you don't want to end up pushing your foot down and end it up in the wall, for example, but that is there. We go to suspension. This is, this is a nice addition as well. So you can change how soft, and, uh, how soft sorry, your damper is. So comfort, auto, sport, and advanced. Uh, with this, you can change things like your ride comfort from soft to firm. You can change your handling as well, sport. I always leave handling to sport. And just for cornering, it just feels a bit more uh, just precise and agile when it comes to handling and your ride comfort. I just like it just nicely there because in the Model 3, for example, it feels like you're on firm, <laughs> which is not the most comfortable thing when you're uh, driving on the motorway. Then you have your charging settings as always. And this is one of the best things about Tesla. You have your autopilot, so you got auto steer, traffic aware, cruise control. You can change the distance as well, things like your speed. And I also love all this blind spot stuff and automatic blind spot camera. I love that it also lets you know when you need to move off the line. So when you're in traffic light, if you take your eyes off the road for whatever reason, it will tell you to let you know that the car in front is moved and all that stuff. You got your locks as always, lights, display. You can change all this stuff to like dark mode. You can even lock that rear display. So if you have kids who like to mess around with things, you can change that so they don't play around too much. Before I forget, there's also something that's strange on here, which is the gear shifter is now actually on this display as well, which I'm not a massive fan of, but I guess once you've set where you're going, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So for example, put my foot down on the brake. This allows you to then go slide up if you want to start driving, slide back if you need to reverse the car, and you can press and hold this to put it into park. Uh, so <laughs> that's a, it's a pretty strange thing, but th there we have it. And as always, you have all your entertainment here, your, your, your toy box and watching movies and Apple Music, all that stuff. It's all there for you to control. One thing that's also missing in there is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Unfortunately, I don't know why Tesla wouldn't let us have it. I know the maps are good in here, but sometimes the maps is just not optimized as well as you would have like Waze or Google Maps in terms of traffic and all that stuff. And I experienced this all the time when I had my uh, Model 3. You can see your energy management and all that stuff. But the main thing to take away from this is how responsive this is. The whole system just works really well. Um, it's very intuitive and look at that. It's adly, there's hardly any lag there. It's just, it just works the way you want it to. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the infotainment system. Let's put this back in the center. So it's nice and flat and fray on. All right, slide into drive and we are good to go. Let's go for a spin and talk about the way this car feels when you drive. One thing I won't be able to do in this video is do uh, something like a, uh, zero to 62 test because we need the right environment to do that and uh, A is raining, B public roads so I wouldn't be able to do anything uh, like that in this but uh, I've seen loads of zero to 62 tests on YouTube already so you guys can go watch any of those. Uh, I think some people were able to get the stated speed limit, I mean zero to 62 figures. Some people weren't able to do that just because the way Tesla measures theirs is a rolling as, as off the line speed. So they don't do right on the line. So it's once you've reached certain speed and they measure it. So it's a bit different in that sense, but it's still pretty quick. That's the whole point. So in fact, it's so quick that I don't see the point of it. I don't think anyone should be getting the plaid version unless you just got the extra money to spend. I mean, not so much extra. 
the standard range version, the standard version, uh, or, uh, rather, is actually more expensive than the predecessor. So you're looking around £84,000 or so starting, or £80,000, let's just say starting from £80,000 around about. So it's very spenny for what you're getting. And we're still getting that quality issue that you get with Tesla. So, for example, when I'm driving in this, I do get a lot of uh, little squeaks here and there, like vibration. Some of the seals on the doors and stuff like that are not the best. It's like this one here is... I know you guys can't see it, but it's hanging. It's kind of folded on the corner. So you still get those um, issues there. There we go, the stalk situation again. I'm trying to do this <laughs> while I'm trying to indicate. So you have to press that indication indicator button. And what, what, what will happen with that kind of situation is you end up taking your eyes off the road because you do this and you're like, oh, crap, where is it? And then you realize it's actually on the steering wheel and you just have to press that button there to indicate to whichever direction you decide to go. Another thing to mention when it comes to this uh, indicator situation here is also the fact that every time you're turning a roundabout, so you know you've indicated right to go around about and then you're trying to exit, your steering is all the way up here. So now you're thinking you gotta press it from up here, which is kind of annoying compared to just having a stalk where you can easily just flick it as you're turning, that kind of stuff. So look, I have to look down again to, <laughs> to make sure that I'm pressing the right thing, which it's just not, it's just counterintuitive. I don't think it's, they should have, had, they should have done that at all. They should have left the stalk alone. <laughs> but all that aside, this has plenty of numbers when it comes to stats. So you're looking at uh, just over a thousand brake horsepower, just above, just a little bit. And that's a lot of power to be taking this on the road. <laughs> if you're a new driver as well, psh, man, you're experiencing a, t a ton of speed, but I doubt new drivers will be buying this as a first car anyway. Uh, again, it's left-hand drive only, which means vis visibility can be an issue because you're looking at, you're probably used to driving on that side. So coming over to this side in the UK means you then have visibility issues when you're turning, especially at junctions. So do bear that in mind. With zero to 62 figures, that's ridiculously fast. 200 miles per hour top speed. You're gonna have no issues at all when it comes to moving off the line or just reaching those top speed. And you have plenty of torque in here as well. I'm talking more than 1400 Newton meters of torque. So if it's in plaid mode and you put your foot down, it's, oh my God, it's insane. My, <laughs> you get this like outer body experience when you put your foot down and you feel that ridiculous zero to 62 figures and even more so trying to reach hundred miles per hour. So it's ridiculously fast in that sense. That aside though, when it comes to things like handling and the way it feels on the road. It's nice and comfortable. Handling is no issues at all. This is a sports car. Um, you know, when you're cornering and stuff like that, it's very agile, it just sticks to where you want it to be. It's very precise. Where I've got issues with this is when you then dial it down, you just want to cruise, you get a lot of road noise in this. So for example, right now, all my windows are up and all I can hear is just the road. And that's a shame because as an electric car, I love the quietness. I love the way it's just nice and silent in the car. For example, my e-tron GTRS. When you're sitting in that, it's just nice and quiet. There's no, there's no noise, it's nice and serene. But in this, you're getting that road noise as you're driving. I don't know if that 21 inch alloy has part to play in that as well, but it is what it is. Um, that aside, really good experience in here, I think. The screen is nice and big. I love that we've got instrument cluster here compared to where we talk about the Model 3 and the Model Y, uh, where you don't get that central, that instrument cluster there where you get to see things. But yeah, and I love that you can actually tilt the screen because at first, I thought that was a bit of a gimmicky thing to do, but actually, it's actually really nice to have that tilting screen because sometimes the orientation facing the driver feels actually nice um, and loads of autopilot features and stuff like that that makes it just, it just feels safe on the road when you're driving and Tesla's known to be one of the safest cars on the road when it comes to their end cap rating and all that kind of stuff. So that's really good. But yeah, I think I really enjoy driving this car. It's so fast, you're just tempted to always put your foot down. Even with all that weight that this carries, and there's barely any body roll as well. So when you're cornering and stuff like that, it just feels very firm and you can tweak things as well in terms of like the suspension stiffness and the steering stiffness, how you want it to be weighted. You can change all those things. So that's a big bonus to have in here. But I don't think there's a lot I can say about the experience in here. I think the driving is good. It's really good. It's one of the best driving experience you'll have in any car, not just EVs, but also um, petrol engine cars as well. This will give some of the fast supercar some even McLaren to run a run for their money when it comes to how fast you can go off the line and things like top speed and stuff like that so you leave them 
in the dust in some cases. So yeah, you should definitely go on Auto Trader and see some of their <laughs> comparison videos when it comes to the speed stuff. Um, and you can see what they've done over there. Is it worth 110,000 pounds though? I think that's the big question. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you had that sort of money, would you put one down? Would you put that down for this? Let me know in the comments below. But yeah, in the meantime, make sure you subscribe, share this, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.